All right guys, so today I'm gonna to react to a video about how a vending machine business made some guy $300,000. Let's see how he did it. Let's go. People love vending machines because they're convenient. If you're thirsty, you get a Coke. If you're hungry, you get some Doritos. Not many people know that anybody can own them. My name is Marcus Graham, and I made over $300,000 last year from my vending machine business. That's pretty cool. So he made three hundred thousand dollars. Sounds like he's pretty new to this. Let's see. Let's see how he did it. What's cool is it looks like he has like a whole bunch of Coke vending machines, Pepsi vending machines, this type of brand. He doesn't care what it is. He'll just put them out and whatever. So he's got twenty vending machines making three hundred thousand. So each vending machine he has is making about fifteen thousand a year. So each vending machine is making him you know twelve thirteen hundred dollars a month. I guess his plan will be to just keep getting more and more vending machines. Wonder if he does all the work himself or he hires people. Philadelphia, D.C., and Detroit. Damn, he's had Philadelphia, DC, and Detroit. That's pretty far away from each other, so there's no way that he could actually run all these on his own. He probably has to have people that do it. I wonder if the 300,000 that he took in was like profit, gross. Let's see what he says. This snack machine makes $800 a month, and this drink machine makes $1,000 a month. This machine makes $1,000 a month, and this machine makes $1,300 a month. Wow, I said, look, he makes about $1,200, $1,300 a machine. So far, everyone that he showed us, $800 to $1,300. I'm assuming he's talking profit here for sure. I started my vending machine business in 2018. I had a friend who saw a woman taking cash out of a vending machine, and it kind of sparked the idea about maybe we should get into it. It cost me about $4,500 to get started in the vending machine business between two machines and two credit card readers. So it cost him $4,500 to get two machines. So we're looking at like $2,200 a machine. And each machine he spends $2,200 on, he's making $1,200 a month on each one. So that's a pretty damn good return. In 2018, it made $4,000. 2019, it made $25,000. 2020, it made over $200,000. 2021, it made over $300,000. And I'm currently projected to make over $500,000 in 2022. So it looks like he said he's gonna gross $500,000 this year in 2022, and he's gonna make 300,000. So it looks like the profit margins are pretty good. He's making over 50%. I'm assuming that's after labor, that's after the cost of goods and everything else. Before starting the vending machine business, I was making $30,000 a year. I was living in poverty and I was just hoping that one day I can turn my life around. See, these are some of the coolest stories because this is a story of someone that was making $30,000 a year, which is very low. It's hard to survive if you're living on your own, 30,000 a year. So, you know, he went from making 30,000 a year to literally $300,000 a year with his own business. He was working for somebody, now he has his own business. He's making 10 times the amount. You could tell he's very happy about it and excited. So you can see his whole mentality is very positive and good. A few tips that I have for starting your own vending machine business is one, never buy a machine until you have a place to put it. So that's actually really good advice. He's saying don't buy the machine until you know where to put it because it's easy to buy machines. Anytime you want to buy a machine, there's plenty of machines available. I know a lot of people in the vending machine business and, and you could always buy machines. I buy a bottle of Coke for 55 cents and I sell it for 175. I profit about $1.20 per bottle of Coke that I sell. I pay 60 cents for a bag of Doritos at a wholesale price, and I resell it for $1.50. So I'm profiting about 90 cents per bag of Doritos that I sell. Yeah, so his profit margins are, are really good. They're two to three times on everything. And I guess with the labor, he's still making over a double profit on it. 30% of my revenue goes towards buying product for the vending machines. 10% goes towards paying my staff. Another 10% goes towards miscellaneous things like gas, and the other 50% I profit. Boom, well there I go. That's a pretty good breakdown. He ends up making about 50%. One of the challenges of running a vending machine business could be vandalism. One time I had someone try to break into my vending machine to steal cash. They broke the bill validator where the cash goes in and efforts to take out the money. Fortunately for me, they weren't able to do so. I wonder how much money at any given time he actually has in his vending machines. If people are trying to break in, I wonder if they know like how much money can they possibly make when they break in. I wonder if they wait till like they see the machine half empty to break in so there's more money or what the story is. But it seems like it's not easy to break in because he says they weren't successful. In the future, I'm looking to expand to multiple states, add more vending machine locations around the nation. I want to add more staff to the team 
and then potentially open up my own vending machine warehouse where I will sell my own vending machines, card readers, and vending machine products. So, so one thing that comes to mind watching this video is this guy's been doing this for four years now. He's got 20 machines. So, you know, he's been adding about five machines a year to his business. I'm assuming that he has enough money now to add hundreds of machines to his business if he was able to find places to put them into. So it looks to me like the biggest bottleneck or the hardest part about this business right now is to find really good places to put your machines in and you know, I wonder like when he puts a machine somewhere, does he have to pay the person where he's leaving the machine or do they just let him for free because that wasn't even part of his cost. Again, that could be in the 10% miscellaneous. So I guess it doesn't really pay, he doesn't really pay people that much to leave it there or he might leave it there for free. I guess a lot of people that um, have places that, you know, people want these vending, uh, you know, chips and drinks, Maybe it helps their business or helps their um, hotel or helps their uh, apartment to have that there. So it's almost like they don't mind not charging just because it makes their uh, business better. Or I'm sure there's some places that probably charge some small amount to, to you know for rent or to leave it there. So yeah, this is this kid. Um, you know, it seems you know pretty impressive to me. He was not doing well in the beginning. He was making you know a small amount of money. He was you know living in poverty. He said now. He's, you know, lives in a nice place up in the suburbs. He's enjoying life. He gets to do whatever he wants. He gets to work when he wants, doesn't work, you know, when he wants it. And he's helping his family. He has his sister employed. She's making more money now with him than she was before. Um, this is this is a great story. And, um, you know, I see a lot now that people are very, very, um, you know, interested in these vending machine business. It became very hot lately. So I see a lot more stories about it and stories like this are just gonna make more and more people wanna get into it. So if you guys like me breaking down this video and reacting to it, let me know what other videos you wanna see me you know, react to, talk about, and we'll make it happen. See you next time.